Hello, this is John Miller, the creator of this podcast. Now, the rest of Everest is probably the most in-depth look at just what it takes to climb the world's highest peak. But keep in mind that it is a series. And if you're checking out the podcast for the first time, do yourself a favor and go back to episode zero and watch everything in order. That's really the right way to enjoy it. Thanks so much. Hey everyone, before I start this week's episode, I want to share some photographs I received from a podcast viewer, Mike Womble. Thanks so much, Mike, for sharing these photos with us. Mike was able to travel to Kathmandu, Nepal, and uh, was nice enough to wear a Rest of Ever's t-shirt and take some photos of him wearing it. Uh, he was able to take a scenic flight uh, over Everest to check out the mountain he's been watching so many episodes of the podcast about. And it was really important, this trip to Nepal was really important for Mike because he actually used to live there. Uh, back in the 80s, he and his family used to volunteer with the Nepal Leprosy Trust and uh, really cool organization. I, I recommend you guys all uh, visit the website there on the screen. But Mike wasn't able to return to Nepal until just, just this trip here, and it's been decades since he'd been back. So it was really interesting to see the difference in the way everything had changed. Obviously, Kathmandu is a lot different uh, over 20 years later. So uh, I really appreciate you sharing these photos with me, Mike, and I, I'm really glad you were able to get back there. So uh, if anyone else has photos of yourself wearing a Rust of Everest t-shirt or just have some interesting photos to share, uh, just send me an email. And uh, now on with the episode I think most of you have been waiting for for a long time. Here we go. This is the Rest of Everest video podcast, an almost unabridged expedition experience. Episode 83, in the company of giants. Hey, you. Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Rest of Everest video podcast. I'm John Miller, joined, as always, by Scott Jacobs out in Yosemite National Park in California. How's it going, Scott? It's going well, John. How are you? I'm doing all right. Are you surviving the heat wave out there in California? I am surviving the heat wave. They say it's supposed to cool off in the next few days, so I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> good, good, good. Luckily, you're up in the mountains, huh? I am, actually. Okay, awesome. Well, speaking of mountains, I think this is one of the first episodes that you guys will have really been waiting to see this episode. We do actually get to see Everest with our own eyes, and it's pretty cool. It took a long time to get to this point. <laughs> Obviously, all of you are enjoying the journey, otherwise you would still be watching. Uh, let's head up to, oh, about Pangla Pass, or on the road to Pangla Pass, and we'll get up to some altitude and see Everest, so here we go. So we're starting off right about where we left off left, last episode. This is one of the only intersections <laughs> along the Friendship Highway. And that's the famous sign pointing to Everest Base Camp. And last year, or the last time I was here, it wasn't paved. It was still dirt. Now it's all paved. So this is where the uh, journey from 2007 and 2003 kind of come together because this is the sign to Mount Everest. Last time I saw it, I was driving from that direction from Old Tingri coming up this way. So this part of the road was all new. Now this part of the road I've gotten to know and uh, we'll probably be going down that part of the road on the way home or we might take another uh, path uh, from Everest when we go home in a couple of days. So, so this is sort of a cool little nexus for me because this is where the two, the old trip and the new trip come together. Uh, it's truly a, a confluence right here, so it's pretty cool. So let's head up the road to Everest. It sounded like my voice was going. <laughs> we were definitely at some altitude. Uh, we've been a few days at altitude, so you know, I the dry air and just the cold was definitely taking a toll on both of us. It's true that uh, the humidity up there is almost nothing. It's it's negligible. You know, we think Colorado is dry, where we you know a nice summer day we might get up to ten percent humidity or something, but uh, it it was next to nothing. <laughs> So here we're driving up to the entrance gate where there are some armed guards and they have to check your passport, make sure you've got your tickets, your entry ticket, so to speak. And I remember the guards there being extremely bored. 
There's Lop Song gonna go take care of business. I remember that being one of the only, you know, real official uh, points uh, after leaving Lhasa. You know, most of it, it just felt like a you know, road in the middle of the wilderness. But, you know, then there's this official checkpoint <laughs> you go through, you show your path, and you're in. There's Young Lo, our driver, showing his expertise and passing that other Land Cruiser. <laughs> you always drive with your horn. You always drive with your horn. I think Young Lo just didn't want to be in the dust. Yeah, exactly, because this road is obviously dirt now, and it's just nothing but switchback after switchback after switchback as we're climbing up to around 17,000 feet to the top of Pongla Pass. It was funny, I remembered, I remembered all of these switchbacks just in my head from 2003. I didn't film any of it. And then I was thinking, did that really happen? Or is that something I, I dreamt about? So it was cool to see them again. And I actually remembered them in quite vivid detail. And this time I made sure to film them. There's the dust that <laughs> Scott's talking about. Uh, every chance young Lil would get, you'd see him wiping down his car, you know, pouring a little water on the windshield and just cleaning it off. So. I'm, I'm betting the reason he drives so fast and passes so many cars is that he just doesn't want the dust. Yeah. <laughs> They're all very proud of their vehicles, even though they don't own them personally. You can see we're really getting up there now. You can see all those switchbacks down there. The road really is a, it's a, a feat of engineering. And, you know, we, Scott and I are very accustomed to Trail Ridge Road in Colorado, but uh, Trail Ridge Road is still near a metropolitan area, so to speak, whereas this is really in the middle of nowhere. So all of this work had to be done in an extremely remote location. It's just amazing. So we just go through switchback after switchback, and then in just a little bit, we uh, kind of go around a turn and... Mount Everest. <laughs> you cannot believe that view. Uh, no. Something else. Definitely worth the, the journey so far. I think it was at this point you realize I'm in Tibet. <laughs> <laughs> You've realized this many times in the journey, but this is another realization moment. I'm in Tibet. I'm looking at Mount Everest with my own eyes. I'm well, how are you? I'm looking. I'm this. In the background, you can hear some Tibetan woman. She was trying to sell us some prayer flags to drape around our necks. <laughs> I remember having no choice about buying them. Exactly. She put them on, she put them on and. <laughs> They were mine. She would not accept them back. So I'm doing a nice pan here. So there's Everest. You can see Lhotse back there. I mean, these right here, folks, these are the highest mountains in the world. I mean, it just does not get any higher than these mountains. We'll be coming up on Cho Oyu in just a second here. You can really tell the 8,000 meter peaks from the rest of them because the 8,000 meter peaks just tower over everything else. Truly, truly massive. It's just amazing. I think, I think those mountains are about 70 kilometers so, from us. Mount Everest. We've got lots of, the lots of face. 
Wow. <laughs> No, we can't actually see that face. You can't see no, the Lutzi? that's on the other. Lutzi's on the other well, you side. can see the, you can see, uh, you can't see Lutzi's face, but you can see the, the peak of Lutzi. Lutzi. But what we see is all in shadow right now. Yeah. That's the north face. Okay. And you can see right where the shadow breaks into light. Yeah. That is um, going up from the north call. Yeah. And then you can see where it suddenly turns, um, it turns to the right. That's the northeast ridge, where the first, second, and third steps are. Okay. It's just laid out right in front of us. Yeah, I mean, it's just right there. <laughs> and Lotsi is the one directly. Behind. It's the lower peak behind it. Yeah, okay. just below the clouds there. And then that's Choyo Yu. Choyo Yu. Yeah. Choyo is the one right before it, this slope cuts it off, cuts off the view. <laughs> So what do you think was the the journey all the way here worth the view? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's been a long, it's been 11 days to get here. <laughs> Gosh, it has been 11 days. It's the, what's the date today? Today's the 12th. Today's the 12th? Yeah. Wow. So it's definitely been worth it. This is amazing. This is probably, I, this is just unique. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all those mountains. I mean, we're looking at four 8,000 meter peaks right now. One, two, three, four. Yep, four. I mean, this is the Himalaya. Yeah, yeah this, is, <laughs> this is the real deal here. This is the Himalaya. This is just amazing. I like your prayer flag, Scott. It's more pictures. <laughs> We look like tourists. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's okay, though. It's kind of funny listening to us, our little banter there, because in a way, it's, you're just kind of speechless. The excitement uh, was definitely palpable. <laughs> it's just so cool how you just come around that turn, and you've got that, that kind of wall of rock in, in this cut road cut and then suddenly boom there's everything and we just f going from Lhasa down to Everest you just really don't get a chance to see Everest like you can you can from old Tingri you can see Everest towering in the distance but from going north down to base camp you just don't you don't get any any idea of how how near you are and then suddenly there it is Mount Chamalungma. 8,848 meters. In Tibet, it's con in Tibet it's considered 29,035 feet. And in Nepal, it's considered 29,028 feet. They don't recognize the 35. And since this is a, this is a pass, of course, you get all the prayer flags. I did not pee near any of it this time. <laughs> I just can't believe how clear a day it was in 2003. You know, it was the summit of Everest, or excuse me, only the summit of Everest was sticking out from behind clouds. We really didn't get quite the same view. I saw this mound of rocks, a pair of flies sticking out of it. Thought that was pretty cool. Just really, really is amazing. So there you have it, folks. <laughs> That's uh, sort of the culmination of the road so far. But don't worry, because next episode we'll get up close and personal with Everest and we'll get to get back to base camp and we'll be able to meet up with uh, Justin and Brian from the longevity team. And we might even get to see a little bit of what they had to say um, being climbers and having just arrived a couple days earlier. So thanks so much, Scott. John, thank you. <laughs> it's pretty nice to see Everest after all this time, I have to admit. <laughs> 
So, all right. Well, everyone, we will catch you next week. Bye. The rest of Everest is downloaded all over the world every week. If you enjoy watching and would like to show your support, then take a look at my website. Aside from having lots of additional blog entries from the expedition updated every week, there's this little donation button on every page. Now, many of you have pressed that button and your generous contributions are helping to cover my hosting fees. If you haven't donated but would like to, then just contribute any amount. In return, I'll give you access to the video and audio dispatches I sent out while we were actually at Everest. It's pretty interesting stuff. Contribute $25 or more, and I'll even throw in an iPod-compatible version of the film Everest The Other Side. That's the project the entire podcast here is based on. As always, our announcer is Marlon May, and our music is provided by Wendy Wu. Check her out at wendywu.com. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching The Rest of Everest. For more information on the expedition, please visit therestofeverest.com.